Hi, this is Lucy, and welcome to a Fallout 76 Building 101 episode. In today's episode, I am going to show you how I power my camps, how I hide conduits and wires, and also how to make power generating boxes. So let's get started. When I was building the brownstone house, um, I wanted to find a way to hide my wires because I didn't want to drape wires across the walls, which is how I'd previously powered my camp. So I had a look on, on YouTube and I found a video where a guy was using mats, doormats, to place power conduits. Now what he determined, or I don't know if it was him that actually came up with the idea, was that if you power a conduit on another object, if you move the object underneath, the conduit stays wired up no matter where you put it. So it will go through walls, through foundations, through furniture. Now I tried this and it was fine, he was putting them in doorways, but I had, I had pieces of mat sticking out and I didn't like that. So I kind of figured that if it worked with a mat, that maybe it would work with another small object. So I came up with this blueprint. This is one of the little succulents from the Atom store. I placed a conduit on top of it and then I blueprinted it and I used this as my power widget. Now if you don't have these succulent plants and they're not available in the Atom store at the moment, you can use other small items. I have had some luck with this small light. If you're wondering why it's lit, it's because this is a power generating box. <laughs> you can place a conduit on top of it. The only proviso is, I mean there aren't any really small objects in 76, but the only proviso is that you must be able to select the item underneath to move it. This does give quite a nice effect, you get like a low light underneath the wall, but if you don't want that, the other thing I have realised you can use is actually this power conduit. And it's quite useful, I might actually, um, I will do it now, I'm going to blueprint this. I'm not 100% sure yet how this will work under foundations because of the size of it, but we can give it a go. They've both gone white, we can create a blueprint. Now if you're going to be, most of my builds are quite small, so usually I will only need to power up a small area. And one of these power conduits will usually power, if you put that in the middle it would probably power this whole area. So if you want to um, power larger areas, it gets slightly more complicated, but I will show you. What we will need to do is, not only will these go in, go in doorways, they will go in corners and they will go between 
walls on these edges. Now I left the mat out because if you are powering a lot of these and connecting a lot of these you're not going to be able to use your move your generator. So either start with your generator where you want it to be, its final position, or put your generator on a mat. Now, obviously, I use this Atom Store generator because it's clean and small. If you don't have it, I would suggest you get it next time it's available in the Atom Store. Um, if I'm powering up a larger area, like when I did the 7-Eleven, I will use the Fusion generator. I had lots of light boxes that were very power intensive. But otherwise, I would recommend this generator. You can, of course, use any generator you want. It's up to you. But if you, when we get on to um, merging this into a box, it you, really only works with this generator. Right, so we are going to power up our conduit. Now the trick to this is the object underneath, you have to move it once. Once you've done that one, it's almost like locking it in. You can then move this wherever you want, want to. We are going to place it in this corner. Now, again, with the generator, because it's connected, move it once and you should be able to move it and it will stay connected. Now, if you're, build if you're doing this in a large area, it can get quite complicated quite quickly. And you also have to worry about where your wires are going. I'm just going to put these down so that I can double wall this. Now obviously I'm starting in the corner it's easier but if you are going to be wiring up a large area you're gonna want to make sure that you have your next move planned out we're not going to be able to connect to this once the walls are up. The amount of times I do this and I forget to move it once, it happens a lot. <laughs> Now we might have a problem with this wall, with this wire, we might be okay. Right, I can't get this wall on because this wire is in the way. So we're going to have to move this generator out of the way. And now we can get our double wall on. So this one I am going to move over here into this wall and this one I am going to move over here into, let's go this way here. And I am going to move my generator outside of the building. Now you will find that if you turn all these into walls all of these conduits are now hidden. You may occasionally have to adjust because that one's sticking out slightly but that is basically the gist of it. Now the one proviso I will say, and I found out this out recently while I was building Tiny Town. I thought I had finished doing my wiring up and before doing the um, tour video I went around and checked that everything was okay and I had one of these sticking out somewhere. So I tried to pick it up and, I, and move it and when I did 
the wire didn't stay connected. And the problem with that was that they're all dependent on each other, so I had to pretty much wire up the whole camp again. And what it is, I think, is that this movement trick, this movement where it stays connected, is only valid for the session you're in. So if your game crashes, if you get tired halfway through or distracted, if you come back later and try and pick one of these up and move it, if you're on a new session or you jump worlds, then you might find that it doesn't work. If they are in situ and you're not planning to move them, they should stay connected, but it's just this, this movement ability seems to be affected by different sessions. I hope that makes sense. You can obviously also pass these three floors, so if you want to pass one upstairs, we'll just use this one. It's gone from that one. <laughs> yeah, it's useful to know which ones are connected, but it's still hidden. Because that was connected to there, it's passed the wire up through there. I normally do them vertically. Um, So connect it, move it once, and it will stay connected. Now because you haven't moved this one, it's always worth, if you're doing multiples, to just move that one as well. Because otherwise if you reposition that one, it will, it will lose the connection. Oh, I got my jetpack for Scarlet as well, which is very useful when you're building. And there you can see the wire is going vertically up through the wall. It's not easy. It drives me nuts. It's just practice. Understanding how it works. And I kind of figure if I can do it, anyone can do it. So play around, start with small areas, just connect two or three maybe, and build up from there. The same principles apply to putting these under foundations. Wire up your conduit widget. And what you're going to do is you're going to place it going to change the um you are going to place it next to these foundations on the edge between two foundations like this we are going to put another one down wire it up, move it once, just so that we, once you bury these, they are tricky to get out. Now what you should find is that your foundations will fit over the top. Now the reason this one is not going in is there's a wire. So, as I said earlier, you sometimes have to move your widgets about. And then, of course, you can put this one back to the position that you want it. 
For single story buildings, this works really well. If you have a two story building, see, this won't work. So what you would need to do, take this foundation off. pass it through like that. Now what I've done with these in the past is I usually just put an inobtrusive power conduit on the back of the building like this. This is what I did with Tiny Town and just push this in like that. You could, if you want to be really fancy, combine both tricks, put this one up here, Let's get rid of this one. it up here and there you have a wall conduit glitch combined with a foundation conduit glitch unfortunately you will have this foundation this conduit at the back sticking out you could always put a workbench in front of it if it's close enough you might be able to get another foundation over it No, it won't let me. It likes corners. There seems to be some kind of... Um, the collisions are not as severe on corners. And I think this is why if you ever build here or anywhere where there's lots of plants, you will find that the plants nearly always stick through on the edges or the corners because the collisions there are not as pronounced. The next thing on our list is a power generating box, but what I think I will do is come back when there's a bit more light. It's another bright and sunny morning on my server, which makes a change because I don't often get two sunny days in a row. We are now going to make a power generating box, and if you don't understand what I mean by that, If, like me, you like to build small camps, you can hide a generator that is powered up inside a box or a piece of furniture so you don't have to worry about wires or conduits at all. Now, I normally use this stash box because it's about the it's the best size but you can use other things and I will show you you will need for this you will need a pressure plate this is available from a plan in the world called advanced power connectors and somebody did say to me the other day last week on one of my videos that this no longer works well it still works for me it is tricky. There is a, a knack to it. Now you will notice as I move this generator around that there is a trailing wire. Now you could use um, a power conduit um, widget like we built earlier or and put the generator on the mat but once you merge it with the box this trailing wire will disappear. Now what I'm going to do to start with is I am going to glitch this power conduit into the generator. 
This is something I've only started doing recently. I used to hide the power conduit with another box on top, but you don't need to. We are going to place our generator on our box. Try and make sure it's centered so no bits stick out. Now, I have had a problem with this sometimes. It doesn't always want to go. If that happens to you, start again. Um, I was doing this yesterday. I was doing a trial run and it was going in, but I was having to remove it and myself off the pressure, pressure plate every time and I have no idea why. As you will see, the trailing wire has now disappeared. I will take this over here. I will put a light up. And hopefully you can see, because it's quite bright, that the light has lit up. And these do generate power for quite some distance. It depends on the object. Some lights are better than others for that. So that is how you do it and you can in fact do it in lots of different objects. Um, I'll get another generator out. And a power connector. I mean, depending on the size of your camp, you could just put these in furniture and not worry about wires. Now, when merging, obviously, you cannot merge below the merging object. You can't get it to stick out out below the bottom. So if you're using a small box like this, it would be sort of halfway up. It would be sticking out the top. Um, I have managed to merge one of these generators into this box. There's one in Nora's house. Uh, the metal box. I've used this. Let's try this one. Oops. Right. Now this is going to be tricky because of where the position is of the ghost conduit. There we go. Right, once we get it up there, we can position it more accurately. Now, obviously, it is overhanging here, but if we get it into the bottom, hopefully, that will be covered up. If you haven't seen my merge video, All I'm doing is putting myself and the object on the pressure plate, pressing the move button, which on Xbox is A, and just pressing, holding and let go. And there you go. The generator is wired up, it is completely hidden, you don't have the trailing wire again. And it works. So I hope that's useful. 
If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. I would like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers this week because if you're not aware, I passed the 2000 milestone. So thank you all very much for your support. It's been quite a journey. When I started this channel last year, it was mainly to get me through COVID. I had friends who were YouTubers who kept saying, oh, you should start your channel. I have a lot of health problems. I didn't think I was going to be able to manage it. I'm not particularly wealthy. I've been buying stuff on a shoestring and managing. Um, and on that note, I will also add, I have bought a new PC, which is arriving today. Um, so over the next week or two, there might be a bit of a blip with my production. I don't know. I'm currently streaming through Xbox Console Companion, which I'm pretty certain you can't download anymore. So um, I'm going to have to get a capture card and figure out how I'm going to wire that into all my rather complicated system. Um, but I am hoping with the new PC that I will be able to get Fallout for PC and have a look at the PTS. But the main reason for getting the new PC was because I'm having glitches in my videos because my, my old PC is chugging a bit sometimes when I'm recording. That's my excuse anyway. <laughs> so thank you everyone. Hopefully there won't be too much service interruption in the next couple of weeks, but I will keep you posted. That's all from me today. Thank you for watching.